Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay God. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Dark Matter. Uh, you can see that I already have it on my weapon, as well as I've gotten the calling card. I've gotten the emblem that I can show off. All my levels, you know, weapons are leveled, all that type of stuff. We're going to talk about the steps that are required to get Dark Matter and how to make it as easy as possible. And in my case, you can see that my highest kills weapon in zombies is 6,000. And this stoner is what I use for pretty much everything now that I've already done it. And the times that I've played zombies, whether I'm going for Easter egg, going for high rounds, doing other Dark Ops challenges, I'm using the stoner because it's a top tier weapon in the game as well as within zombies. So you can see all of these, they're like three or 4,000 kills and I was able to get gold. All these weapons the challenges completed. Um, so obviously I kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. We're gonna go through various things and I'm gonna show you in-game examples as I do pretty much everything I'm talking about. Enjoy the video, learn something new. Please do me a favor, hit the like button. I do have timestamps for you if you wanna to skip to a specific part on the timeline as well as in the description. And if you wanna find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Quick reminder, my GPO code is still gonna be 30% off until the 7th. So if you wanna try a sample, stock up, whatever, Go ahead and use code JIGOT at checkout or the link down in the description. So now we're gonna go through my entire list of tips. And what you're seeing in the gameplay in the background is my overall match. I played for one hour, got to round 30, and then I recorded it with the timestamp on there. And then I'm chopping it up so you can kind of see how long it takes to get these individual segments. Obviously you can do some of these things that I'm showing a little bit more fast and efficient, but the overall goal is this is something that pretty much everyone can replicate. So I made sure that it played as safe as possible because some people are going to be a little bit more skilled at zombies than others. And I wanted to treat this as whether you're more new, a little intermediate, or you're more advanced. I'm going to include a little bit of something for everybody. So the first thing we'll talk about is leveling guns. One of the most important parts within Cold War is leveling gun. They've made it dreadfully slow, especially without the double weapon XP. So obviously if you gotta do it normally, the fastest way is still going to be Dirty Bomb. Zombies did actually have a way to exploit XP a little bit. They patched it immediately, but there was still XP to be found within the first seven rounds. So if you go up to start a seven round, you'd leave. As long as people were in your party, you get XP bonus. If you're on PlayStation, you get additional. So there's a lot of different factors that go into it there. But overall, Dirty Bomb is still gonna be the fastest way to go. So the goal is to level up your weapons. If you're gonna do it in zombies, I wouldn't go high rounds. Maybe go up to round 12, 15, and then the XP kind of falls off pretty hard. Back out and repeat it again. This can take incredibly long without double weapon XP. So it is a grind and it is what it is, especially for those first levels. The key is to get to the levels where it will start counting the elite. So you can at least do those challenges. And if you need to go back and level up your weapon some more in Dirty Bomb, you can do that and then finish off the remaining challenges because those ones are pretty easy. As long as you've taken care of the 15 elites, pretty much everything is pretty straightforward at that point. And by the time you've gone through, you'll probably be in the mid 40s if you've already started at the given level for those weapons that go up over 50, and then the other weapons that go up over 30, most of these secondaries, you really wanna get them to whatever level they need to be for those elites. I'm pretty sure it's 10, uh, maybe 15. I don't remember the exact number, but that's kind of where you wanna go. That is the first step. You wanna make sure all your levels are leveled up. Next up is you want to use your Ethereum crystals when you unlock them. If you're not sure exactly what this is, let me go ahead and show you. So pretty much when you go to your loadout, there's a section for skills, and this is where you're gonna be able to upgrade your stuff as you go to increments of five, 10, 15, 20, all the way up, you get these Ethereum crystals. When you exfil, you get extra Ethereum crystals, and pretty much the things you want to focus on at first, prioritize, is you want to max out Juggernaut. And this is usually gonna take one, two, then three Ethereum crystals to each one of these tiers. So it's a total of six Ethereum crystals. So I would focus on getting Juggernaut leveled up and then that will give you the extra health. So you get extra 100 instead of the standard 50. On top of that, the next one I would do is the Deadshot Daiquiri. This is gonna become particularly important in efficiency when we're talking about getting critical shots, which is pretty much headshots on zombies. Um, you're gonna deal extra 100% critical damage if the enemy is at full health. So you're able to deal that health, boom, you can get an insta-kill, where maybe it'll take a couple shots to the body. Increased damage against armor, which is particularly important as you get above round 15 to 20 when the armored zombies show up. Reduce hip fire spread. In some of these weapons you move, or all the weapons, you're gonna move faster than the hip fire. And it's pretty tight if you put on hip fire attachments, you can pretty much aim with that. Um, if you're not gonna do the aim down sight strat where you're basically spamming ADS on controller where it'll help the aim assist, and pretty much lock onto the head instead of the center chest. 
because if without the dead shot daiquiri it's going to be center chest um and then you're going to have to adjust your aim to get those crit shots versus with this way pretty much you ads it's going to go to the head um, and you can kind of get in the habit of doing that next would be the field upgrade um, a little bit more aggressive player you're going to be able to burn through enemies a little bit quicker is the ring of fire um but not everyone's going to be able to run that particular strat because maybe it's not as safe you can go with the aether stroud or you can go with the healing aura and those are the main two you probably want to go with if you're not going to go with ring of fire but personally i would recommend ring of fire as you get a little bit more experience because this will allow you to melt through elites basically wipe out waves of enemies and you can use it pretty quickly because you get it back rather quickly especially when you start getting in the higher rounds and there's way more zombies you kill a few zombies you get it back you kill a few zombies you get it back and allows you to speed through those rounds significantly faster that's what i'm saying the time that i have in this gameplay it could be improved upon significantly since i was using something that was a little bit more for a safe strat uh and then on top of that you go with the weapon of choice so if you're going to start off with rifles you probably want to use this one and the main reason you want to do this is so that you can rack up more attachments obviously if the weapon's already coming in at level 30 you're going to have a bunch of attachments you'll be able to max out those attachments that's pretty much for all of these except for the the secondaries and the pistols um, you're not going to be able to obviously equip uh, eight attachments doesn't have that set up But you will be able to do extra armor damage uh, as we go through so that is what you should prioritize in the beginning Now let's go ahead and skim through the gameplay and show off what's relevant So one thing that's interesting with this game is whether you melee a zombie uh, to kill them or you get a crit shot You are awarded the same amount of score which is used to upgrade stuff buy stuff buy perks whatever the case is uh, what you're going to want to do is I recommend if you're going to be using the weapon you're trying to get challenges for, I would focus heavily on crits in those early rounds. There's not a lot of zombies. They usually die to one shot to the head, maybe two. And you're able to maximize that by the time you do the other steps, turning on the power, all that stuff, which we're going to get to. You're able to get a lot of crits and then those add up because a lot of times people save those until the end. They're not really focused on it. They have 50% ratio, which is terrible. Most of my guns, like I showed off, are between 70 and 80 when I was showing off if it's worth it. And that is pretty efficient in my opinion. I've gotten obviously more efficient as time has gone on. And I'm going to show a little bit off in this gameplay at the end. We'll see how efficient this particular run was when you prioritize criticals and how long that should actually take for you. So now that that part's out of the way, usually the first rounds are pretty straightforward. Um, you're kind of just trying to get some cash together and stuff like that. But I'm going to talk about the overall zombie mechanic. Uh, what a lot of times people don't realize as a new player is there is a maximum number of zombies that are allowed to be on the map at one time. As you kill a zombie, another one will spawn in as you get to the higher rounds. So let's say if there's only 40 zombies allowed to be on the map that, that are following you at one given time. You can kind of run around in circles, usually called training them. And there's different areas of the map you can train. You just get comfortable with where you're at. The starting area I'm very comfortable with, so that's where I tend to train at. But some people will train in the bottom, on the side, by the plane. There's tons of areas. You just got to get comfortable with what works for you. You train them up. You line them up. Maybe you throw a stun, something else. And then you basically just shoot and spam the trigger. And you spam the ADS. And you're going to lock on if you have the dead shot daiquiri. And you're going to be able to wipe them out. For every zombie you kill, if there's more to be spawned in, it will spawn in based off the number of kill. So you want to be able to make sure you hoard them up. No more will spawn for a while. This is a little bit more of a safe strat. If you want to kill them as they come up, that's perfectly fine. But this is more of a safe strat. You train them up. Then you basically wipe them all out. And then be prepared as you kill them, especially in the later rounds, they aggressively spawn and they will likely be behind you. So you got to go ahead and kill a few, move, rotate, kill a few, move, rotate. And that'll allow more to spawn in. And you'll notice once some stop spawning in because that horde starts to thin out thin out and then usually when there's a couple left maybe you do some maintenance you repair your armor those things that we're going to get into as well so the next step is to try and get enough cash i ideally uh we're going to talk a little bit about the bonuses like double xp and insta kills and stuff but the goal is to get anywhere between about 18,000 score up to about 20,000. In this particular gameplay, you see that I got 20,700. Uh, and I decided to go turn on the power at round eight. And a lot of that, you know, it's going to determine, you know, how much money you have is going to determine what you do at this particular instance. Uh, when you are running around and you're getting everything, 
once it narrows down, you only want the one zombie so they don't really mess with you. You're able to do everything you need to in these future steps. And what 18,000 does is it allows you to open all those individual doors that you need to get to the power. We're, we're seeing that happen here. We're kind of running through, opening the various doors. I do buy a couple perks and I do not buy Jug right away. And that's because there's another Easter egg that pretty much almost guarantees Jug. I've done it several times and I've only gotten Jug but there is a chance maybe you get a different perk. Just personally, I, I, I put my trust that it's going to be a jug. So normally I will get at least one, sometimes maybe two perks. And the reason for that is after you've gotten jug for free, then it raises the price of the next perk. So a lot of times I buy the perk before that to save that extra 500 from getting a free juggernaut when we get to the next step, which is the Easter egg. So you go and turn on the power, you do all that stuff, you go through the portal, you, you build the, the, the pack a punch, don't really worry about the pack a punch right away. Then to start this next little mini Easter egg, which is very helpful in my opinion, you have to shoot these five blue orbs. And I kind of do a circle around so you can kind of see where they're at. One, two, then three, then four, and then underneath I hit the fifth one. And then I end up finishing off that last zombie because it's going to kill that zombie anyways. I might as well get the extra score for killing them and getting that crit, even though it is one zombie, whatever. Then it starts this individual mini Easter egg where the zombies are dancing in, the coffin dance or whatever. That was a meme for a little bit. So he does that and then I go maybe run and get another perk. I can upgrade my gear and I prioritize armor. Um, because especially in the lower rounds, the only way you're really going to lose in those lower rounds is just getting mauled too quickly, like you get trapped in a corner. By having armor, that just allows you to live that much longer, especially once you have Juggernaut upgraded. Um, so you've done that. Weapon tiers are great. They're even more powerful than sometimes Pack-A-Punch. So as the rounds go on, you're going to want to make sure you're doing both. But you'll have the, the scrap, the salvage, the resources to do that. As you get to round 30, it's just going to happen organically. You're going to have enough unless you were just wasting it as you went on um, streaks or whatever else that you can buy with those things. Also, while this dance is going on, you have the opportunity to pack a punch without any interruptions. You could pack a punch and keep in mind, anytime you are pack a punching, it'll automatically restock all your ammo. I would avoid doing any of the ammo mods and doing the perk uh, machine that does the ammo mods primarily because that just reduces your crits. If it turns into a zombie, then it starts eating them. Sometimes you'll get a crit, they freeze in place, and then you get a regular kill. Sometimes you electrocute them and it still doesn't count. So there's that'll just kind of subtract from your criticals. So normally you do not want to get those individual perks. Obviously, if you're just trying to level up and you didn't care about that, maybe you could, because then you get a zombie and then it'll go kill seven zombies and then you'd be good. But I would avoid that. So that's pretty much how that part works. The benefit of doing this little Easter egg is it's gonna drop that jug, it's gonna drop off materials, plus it'll also drop a high-end weapon most of the time. And if this is a weapon that drops and you're like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm, I can grind that one, you could pack that weapon instead. So sometimes if you wanna hold off on packing because you haven't done a bunch of weapons, then maybe you do that, grab that weapon, pack it, and then you're good to go with whatever it gives you. It's just gonna have a random set of attachments, but it could be the highest tier of the weapon, so you don't even have to worry about getting the materials for that. That is the first start of pretty much every run you're going to do, um, and then that gets us going into the further rounds. One of the things that is very important is understanding when a uh, power-up is going to disappear. Um, it normally blinks slowly, and then it speeds up and then it insta blinks like brrr, and then you can grab it uh a lot of times you want to do this uh if it's mid round cool go ahead and grab it no big deal if you are close to the end of the round you want to make sure you kill off all the zombies and then you can grab it same thing you can do with the nuke you can call the nuke off on the end and it's there's no zombies on the map so it's just going to kill nothing and you still get the extra bonus score um so you want to do these towards the end of the round if you can or at the beginning of a round if you can you don't kind of want to do it when there's only like three zombies left and then you grab it and then you wait around and you kill those three zombies. It, you end up wasting a lot of time. You want to maximize that. So if it's at the end of the round, make sure you wipe off all the zombies, the round flips, and then you grab that power up uh, before it disappears at the latest possible so that you can get as much time going forward. On the topic of power ups, one of the power ups I often do not pick up is insta kill and the main reason for that is because most of the time if you're on pace in terms of packing your weapon and leveling up in the tiers because you've already done your armor most of the time it's going to kill significantly faster to the head than it does to the body 
meaning that you are very likely to get critical kills if you aim for the head. It's not like you're going to get a burst and then you hit them in the chest and they insta die because you hit them in the chest. When you pick up an insta kill, you are too, it's too easy just to wipe them out and not hit a headshot. And you just keep getting non-criticals and it becomes very inefficient. If your weapon is killing in one shot to the head, maybe two, I, I would probably avoid getting insta kills um, until, let's say you were doing high rounds, 35 plus, 40 plus. I know that's not that high, but let's say you're in that range. Maybe insta kill matters, but you really shouldn't be going that high if you're trying to get this camo. Uh, because you get diminishing returns, the rounds get harder and slower, um, and it's just not effective for leveling your weapon. So I would avoid against picking up insta kills unless you just have a very weak weapon that is not killing in like multiple headshots. You just want to stay as efficient as possible. The other downside of insta kill is while it's active, you will not be able to recharge your field upgrade. Um, which is a huge negative in my opinion, especially if one of your field upgrades is there to kind of bring you back and save you. If you if you if if that's you don't have it, you can't earn it, you're kind of screwed. Obviously, insta kill is very powerful, but then you kind of end up in a position where you could get in a bad spot um, because as soon as it runs out, you still got to charge it. So there's other variables at play. That's one of the other things that the game doesn't necessarily tell you. Also, if you don't want to go running around the map to get all your perks, if you make it all the way up to round 18, I've seen it sometimes on 17, so I don't know what causes that. Maybe it depends on when you open uh, the power, but right around 17 and 18, one of these little vending machines is in the penthouse, which is right here, and you can see it before and after. It ends up being not stocked and fully stocked, and you can literally buy all your perks there. So this is particularly important, like let's say if you're playing in a duo or you're playing higher rounds and you down, you can go run to that area, maybe use a monkey bomb, clear the area, and then you can go ahead and run up and get all your perks pretty quickly, instantly. You don't have to run around to seven different points of the map. So they made it very efficient in that regard. So that's a huge advantage. Uh, it happens right around, like I said, right around 18. Also, this particular area in the penthouse is mostly where the high round strat happens with the ring of fire. Usually two players kind of alternate, pretty much wipe out enemies. And that's usually good for the lower rounds unless you're using wonder weapons. But obviously if you're going for camos, you're not necessarily gonna use the wonder weapons. Um, so those weapons will only get you so far, but it is a very good strat to speed run these types of waves um, if you're a little more comfortable, but you basically drop down the fire, shoot it. There's full tutorials on how to do that. But since this is more of a guide for mostly solo players, that isn't necessarily going to be covered because it's not something that all players will necessarily be able to do. Um, unless you're literally just going for high rounds and you're probably going to use wonder weapons or ray gun for that. The next thing is how elites are counted. Um, a lot of times people get a little confused, especially when they're you know, paying attention to how the counter works. So for one big old green megaton that comes in, that counts as one, but it doesn't count until you've killed both of the ones that split. Uh, but you only need to kill the last one. So for example, if you're playing with the duo, two of the megatons spun in, you can split both of them, kill one from each, and the remaining last one, if one player kills both of that, they're gonna get credit for both of those megatons even if they never fired a bullet at the bigger megaton and when they've split they just get the last damage enough to get the little metal that pops up uh you're going to get um the elite to count um and and from my experience you could team shoot the last one as long as you both are team shooting when that zombie dies you're gonna get credit for it and you'll be able to get the megaton count so a lot of times in duos when you're getting more spawn in or trios or quads you're getting way more of the megaton spawning in so you should theoretically if your team shoot you should be able to get way more megatons in that sense um so you don't have to worry about you know saving those for the end they actually happen pretty quickly um in one game up to 30 if you're playing in a duo you will likely get at least 15 uh, megatons okay also right here i do show how to exfil once you've kind of gone through this strat you're going to go ahead and exfil uh, right around round 30 um obviously if you're this is a solo thing i'm going to talk a little bit more about how bringing another person impacts it and then other things you can do with that to even make that part more efficient but you're going to be able to exfil this is a strategy i use i normally get a leave one zombie in the, the round 30 right before i exfil i go get a sentry gun I place it down in the exfil area. I run back to the, the starting area. I kill off that zombie, grab another sentry gun with two monkey bombs, start the exfil, run to the area, throw a monkey bomb, kill some whatever zombies, place another monkey bomb with the trophy, and then pretty much there's only a handful of zombies. You clear it out, you exfil. Pretty straightforward, especially if you're looking 
to exfil on the lower rounds, this is pretty easy to do as well. You can usually get a couple monkey bombs or at least one monkey bomb and maybe a sentry gun and that can help you clear it out if you're just trying to do those challenges to either unlock the character or get the challenge completed so you get that calling card. So up to this round 30 X fill, I got 1340 kills of total zombies. Obviously that includes dogs and you know, anytime I did not get crits or crits, everything gets included in that number. And then my criticals was 1126. Do the math on that, that is an 84% crit ratio. So very good ratio. And a lot of that had to do with the steps I was talking about. I was already set up, I already had the Deadshot Daiquiri, I'm lining up the headshots, I'm focusing on that, I wasn't picking up the insta-kills, I was basically following everything that I'm explaining to you, so you get a very high percent. Keeping in mind that if I held this rate, I would only need to get 3,000 total kills, and we know that you need to get 2,500 Pack-a-Punch kills. So in reality, if you go up to round 8, unlock the Pack-a-Punch, that only equates to a couple hundred zombies, you're going to be able to get the crits done at the same time you get those 2,500 Pack-a-Punch kills. Um, and then if you start getting very inefficient, it could take you 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 kills, um, 10,000, 15, whatever, a super high number where you're completely wasting a lot of time that you could be putting towards having three, four, or even five guns done. So that is just for solos. Obviously we can go in here, we can queue up, we can play with randoms. Also, if I go to a private match, I can queue up with some friends and allow them to join. This could be particularly important because for every other person you add to the lobby, it's going to essentially double the number of zombies. Not for every individual round, because obviously in the beginning it goes from like eight zombies to like 10 to 12. It's not a lot of big boosts. It's not literally double. But by the time you've hit round 30, you will have essentially had double plus about 10%, which coincidentally, if you run with one other person and they allowed you to get every single kill, you would essentially have enough to get gold within about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes for one gun if it was completely leveled. Obviously that's a perfect world where everything's counting. You would have your 15 elites. Obviously you'd be handling everything by yourself. You wouldn't have help. Um, you'd have all your zombie kills. You'd have over 3000 kills. Um, and then you'd also have all of the headshots, the crits, if you were very efficient. Might take you a little bit wrong, longer up to maybe round 32 or something like that, but it'd be very efficient. If you're gonna have someone to run with, that's cool. You know, that makes it good. You guys can share the elites, but overall your kills is not going to be a lot faster in duos unless that person is literally AFK. So if you have a, if you're on PC and you have access to a PlayStation, you can have an account join you. I would highly recommend join you in round two. Um, and the reason for that is so that when you spawn in, you get a fee, a free self revive. Uh, and then your buddy could just go there AFK. They can leave their system alone, whether they're on PC or a console. And just leave it alone and basically you do everything by yourself exactly what we've talked about but it's going to be twice as many zombies twice as many elites you're going to have a lot more on your hands so that strategy could be good but if you end up getting downed a lot it's probably not that efficient for you so you kind of got to weigh it out as you go and two other tips obviously if you are on playstation they do have an onslaught mode which is exclusive to that console uh, and you'll be able to go into that normally you get like one elite every couple rounds so if you're just trying to farm elites that definitely be the way to go and obviously that only applies to that particular community on top of that the other recommendation i would have is to alternate between weapons don't necessarily just use semi-autos all don't leave those all the way until the end i know people will leave pistols snipers and the, the, the annoying weapons that are going to take a little bit longer, because obviously a red gun is going to be very fast. Um, they're going to leave those for a while, and then they're going to end up in a pretty bad spot. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. I know it's a lot of information to cover, uh, but I think this is pretty much the guide on how to do it as easy as possible. If you have more people in there, there are going to be more people spawning, but you ideally want to have them AFK. If you want to go a little bit more extreme, once you feel comfortable, I would definitely look up a tutorial on how to do the high round strat with the Ring of Fire, because that can be incredibly efficient if you duo with another player who is also very competent at zombies. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to find your way back, subscribe. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.